Good morning and welcome to Sunday morning service of Shoreline Church. As a community of faith, we pray not just for ourselves, but for the needs of the community around us. Our prayers are not just for our aches and pains, but for the brokenness of the least of these around us, the hungry and the hurting. Again, our songs are not just about the state of our souls or the home we have in heaven, but about the influence we can have on building the kingdom of God in the world where we live. Now let us join the call to worship. The present form of this world is passing away. The kingdom, kingdom of God, God is near. near. When Jonah spoke, the people walked and changed their ways. Repent, God will be left. When Jesus called, they left their net and followed him. The kingdom, the kingdom of God, God is near. near. Repent, and God will be left. left. Let us pray. Holy Father, God of all creations, you call us to be your people, to carry your vision in the time and place to go where you send us, to help you welcome your amazing goodness as we gather in the presence of the risen Christ to spread the news that your kingdom is near. Wherever we are this morning, Lord, fill us with your Holy Spirit. O God of our creation, fill everyone in the family of God and shoreline you on sea with your glorious spirit that we may share the good news with a word in need. May the word we hear from you this morning and the songs we sing to praise you help us to bear the fruit of the Holy Spirit so we can grow up to and live out your call in our lives. In Jesus' holy name we pray. Amen. And now, please join Paul as he leads us in O Come to the Altar by Chris Brown. Are you hurting and broken within? sin, Jesus is calling. Have you come to the end of yourself? Do you thirst for a drink from the well? Jesus is calling. Oh, come to the the Father's arms are open wide Forgiveness was bought with The precious blood of Jesus and mistakes Come today There's no reason to wait Jesus is calling Bring your sorrows and trade them for joy From the ashes a new life is born Jesus is calling Come to the altar, the Father's arms are open wide. Forgiveness was bought with the precious blood of Jesus Christ. Savior, 
bowed down before Him, before He is Lord of all. Sing hallelujah, Christ is risen. And so oh, what a say. today, someone has brought primroses that are in bloom, and they've put them in a planter that's close to the back door. And it's a mystery at this time who brought those primroses. But we thank you very much because it reminds us that spring is coming. Today we're going to talk about shoes. In fact, a particular shoe today. This shoe happens to be owned by Merle Patterson, a longtime member here. And Merle had a hip replacement surgery several years ago. I don't know how long ago, but it was several years ago. And when she healed, they discovered that one leg was shorter than the other. Mm -hmm. So since then, she has had to buy shoes and then have them remodeled so that one is a thicker sole than the other so she doesn't walk around like this. Down and up, down and up, right? She needs to be balanced. So Merle got a call from the store and they said that her shoes were ready. And she went and picked them up on Friday you can guess, because this is Merle Shoe, what happened? She got home, and there was only one shoe in the box, which didn't do her much good at the time. But she called me, and because I live close to that store, I went up and, and got the shoe, and I'll drop it off to her this afternoon. But what this reminds me about is the fact that we need both shoes in order to be balanced. Right? It's really hard to be walking around with one shoe and 
and be unbalanced with um, a leg that's shorter. It reminds me that God helps us also to be balanced. And he is as close to us as the shoes on our feet. So what I want you to think about this week is when you head out to do whatever project you're going to be working on, whether it's school or vacuum cleaning or sweeping out the garage, whatever it is, remember to think about the Holy Spirit is as close to you as the shoes on your feet, and you ask the Holy Spirit to guide you. Let's say a prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you that you watch over us each and every day. We pray that you would guide us, not only below us, above us, beside us, in front of us, and in back of us. Help us to do the things that you want us to do. Give us balance in our life. In Jesus' name, amen. Our gospel reading today comes from Mark, chapter 1, verses 14 to 20. After John was put in prison, Jesus went into Galilee, proclaiming the good news of God. The time has come, he said. The kingdom of God has come near. Repent and believe the good news. As Jesus walked beside the Sea of Galilee, he saw Simon and his brother Andrew casting a net into the lake, for they were fishermen. Come, follow me, Jesus said, and I will send you out to fish for people. At once they left their nets and followed him. When he had gone a little farther, he saw James, son of Zebedee, and his brother John in a boat preparing their nets. Without delay, he called them, and they left their father Zebedee in the boat with the hired men and followed him. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Amen. Thanks, Alicia. Let us pray for our brothers and sisters in need of God's grace. Lord, we have come, you have come to Shoreline, looking neither for worthy nor wise ones. You only ask us to follow humbly. The scripture lesson for this morning paints pictures of hardworking people going about their daily task when they are confronted by Jesus. This same Jesus, who long ago called those first disciples, called to us each day. Each of us met you differently. Jesus, you came to where we work and where we live and called us into your ministry. Jesus is coming for each one of us and inviting us to follow him humbly. We've lifted the names of loved ones this week in pray for petition for God's healing love. And God hears all our cries and responds in love. We thank you, Lord, for Micah's good medical report. His inflammation in his throat is all gone. And Micah is able to eat food finally. Now we pray that you'd help him to eat and digest well and to become healthier and stronger. We also pray for all our friends and families who recently had surgeries and medical treatments. Lord, be merciful and help them to heal completely. We also lift Robert Adams, John Soror, Jack Patterson, Sharon Schaub, Anna Barnes, and Melissiana Kitty in your care. For all of us in the church family, Lord, help us to trust your guidance and presence. Help us to remember that there is no time in which we are out of your care. Heal our wounds, bind up our bruises and broken spirit. Put us on a pathway of peace. As we have offered our prayers, let us also offer our lives trusting 
in God's love and call to us, responding with confidence. For we ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done in earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive them that trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever and ever. Amen. This morning I'd like to share a message from God. Uh, in summary, it's a sermon about repentance and a new life. When Billy Graham was uh, driving through a small southern town, he was stopped by a policeman and charged with speeding. Graham admitted his guilt, but was told by the officer that he would have to appear in court. The judge asked him, guilty or not guilty? When Graham pleaded guilty, the judge replied, that will be $100. Suddenly, the judge recognized the famous preacher. If you violated the law, he said, the fine must be paid, but I'm going to pay the fine for you. He took a hundred dollar bill from his own wallet, attached it to the ticket, and then took Graham out, uh, bought him a state dinner. That said, Billy Graham is how God treats repent sinners and I might add it's called God's grace. Amen? After his baptism and having survived the temptation in the desert Jesus arrives in Galilee in our gospel lesson for this morning to announce that God's time has come. The kingdom of God has come near. Repent and believe the good news. To come near means to join one thing to another. Heaven and earth are about to be joined together. Last Sunday, we talked about that Jesus is the letter between heaven and earth, right? And Jesus is quite literally the stairway to heaven. Everything is about to change. It's about to change for people who are hungry for him. It's about to change for people who are deep, appreciate and, and desperate for him. Repent and believe the good news. Repent means quite literally to turn around. Think about it when you are alone and walking down a dark and scary road. Turning around is not a bad idea. When you are heading for disaster, it is best to turn as quick as you can and run in the opposite direction. Have you ever felt as if you didn't belong? Like if something wasn't quite right? Have you ever been a party and felt out of place? Or have you ever felt alone in a group of people? Have you ever thought that there's something wrong with the way things are moving? Have you ever felt that your life could be so much more than it is? Life should be so much more fulfilling, so much more meaningful, and so much more useful. Have you ever wanted to stop the train and get off? I know I have many times. I'm not talking about giving up nor ending it. I'm talking about moving from death to life, from darkness to light, from the way of the world to the way of the kingdom. I know I have shared this before. 
when I was young, I felt very lost. And I came to a point in time where heaven and earth were about to be joined together. It's, it's kind of like a Jesus is called to Simon, Andrew, and James, and John. I was doing my best to improve my life situation, but not satisfied with that. I knew there was more to life than I was headed. And when Jesus called me, I saw a choice. I could continue following Satan, or I could follow Christ. I could keep going the way I was going. Or I could turn around and go in the opposite direction. I made a decision to listen to Jesus and turn around. And my life has never been the same. I would say, even today, at age 54, that was the most important decision I have made in my life and will probably ever make. It was after that decision that everything began to change. And indeed, I had become a new creature in Christ. But there is not the end of the story. Just like the Simon, Andrew, James, and John's decision to follow Christ. It was not the end of their stories, but it was just the beginning. Ahead of them, and for all of us who decide to follow Christ, there is so much to learn, much to stumbling, misunderstanding, and backsliding. Becoming a faithful disciple of Jesus Christ takes both a moment and a lifetime. I've still got a long way to go. How about you? I confessed to you a few Sundays ago, and there's still a lot of old Kevin left in me. But by the sheer grace of God, as Paul tells in the book of Romans chapter 11, verse 29, for God's gift and His call are irrevocable. When we feel the most like ending our own discipleship, we remember the call. And we remember that we have tasted and seen that the Lord is good. Amen? Our God is good. And we have a new home. It is the kingdom of God. And we have been there. And we know the love that exists there. And so even when we turn back, remember, life is truly never the same again. Once we have repented and given our lives to God, you know, repentance really means trusting in the goodness of God. Repentance is trusting in the goodness of God. And so, when Jesus restores the original image of God in us, when we become the new creature in Christ, when the old things have passed away and all things become new. As Paul put it in 1 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 17. We are learning how to be the original human beings God made us to be in the first place. We are returning home, I would say. And Jesus is telling us that we can go home. And that God will welcome us back and throw his arms around us is a such good news. And that is what Jesus tells us to believe. Amen? The kingdom of God has come near. Repent and believe the good news. Christianity is always both for now and for a long haul. Both for a moment and a lifetime. Since repent is in the present Hands, it tells us it is a continuous action, just as believing is a continuous action. We don't just repent once, then we are done with it. It could be nice if we work, you know, it worked that way. But as the old sayings go, 
Christians are forgiven, not perfect. Church is a hospital for sinners, not a museum for saints. Perhaps you already found that out by now. We make so many mistakes, my brothers and sisters. We allow pride to delude us. We allow sins to take a residence in our hearts, minds, and bodies. We are citizens of the kingdom of God. But we so often go our own way. And like the young man in the parable of the prodigal son, before we know it, we are feeling pigs and longing to eat what we feed them. But God's call is still there for God's gift, and His call are again irrevocable. And if we come to our senses, like the man in the parable, we will, and Lord willing, turn around and come home. Amen. Repentance carries with the understanding that we have some changing to do, some new direction to take. It's a primary orientation is toward God's future, rather than our past. Jesus' call to repentance is an invitation to trust in a future made possible by the grace of God. And that is the gospel, the good news toward which Jesus invites us to stop, turn, or turn again, and hold on to it for dear life. Amen? Repent, Jesus said. Repent. Things don't have to stay the same way they are now. In fact, to follow Jesus means the things, the life that have changed because you had the call of Christ to repent and believe the good news. What things to need to change, what things to do, keep clinging on that you know you should let go. After today's worship service, please sit down and uh, meditate quietly or pray quietly and think about the things. What things have you let go? And what things that we, each of us, are still uh, holding on to? And repentance means uh, continuous turning, turning from sin and toward the God and grace of our Lord Jesus Christ. That's why Jesus not only tells the paralyzed man to pick up his mat and walk, but says, your sins are forgiven. Amen? In those four words, Jesus announces that every human being needs to know sin. So we are. Sin often gets the best of us, reduces us, demeans us, and makes us less than what God intended for our lives. Let's face it, devil is good at making what is wrong look right. Right? Devil is really good at that. He at making, he's good at making what is ugly and mean, and selfish, and disgusting, seem just a fine and dandy, attractive even. But in the kingdom of God, which in the kingdom of reality, sin is not attractive. Sin is what it is. It's ugly, mean, selfish, and disgusting. It is ridiculous and petty. It is sad and rotten. It is not the way things we meant to be. It is not the way we are meant to be or to live. And when we are blindly living in sin, there is something big missing from our lives. We are broken, we are lost, we are blind. And we cannot find our way home. And so, God sends 
his son. After his son calls Peter, Andrew, James, John, you and me and everyone else in Shoreline Church. And he says, time has come. The kingdom of God has come near. Repent and believe the good news. Then he says, come, follow me. It's time. It's time to come home. Have you heard Jesus calling? Have you taken him upon his invitation? Are you a new creature in Christ? Is your home the kingdom of God? If not, listen to Jesus this morning. Time has come. The kingdom of God has come near. Repent and believe in the good news. Amen. Let us pray. Oh, gracious Father, loving Father, thank you for your everlasting love, never changing mercies. Father, you know our weaknesses. And then we are very weak on temptations. But by your sure grace, by your sure love, Lord, we are here today worshiping you as a community of faith. Oh, thank you, God, for the rest of our lives, including today, this moment, we summit ourselves to you. Come, Lord Jesus. Come Holy Spirit and take a residence in our hearts and minds and bodies. Lead us each day, every moment, in your righteous path. And lead us and guide us on the straight path. Thank you, Lord, for your great love for this small church on the corner. In Jesus' precious name we pray. Amen. Welcome. Jesus is calling. Softly and tenderly, Jesus is calling. Softly and tenderly, Jesus is calling. Calling for you and for me. See on the portals, he's waiting and watching, watching for you and for me. Come home, come home, you who are weary, come home. Earnestly, tenderly, Jesus is calling, calling all sinners. now fleeting, the moments are passing, passing for you and from me. Shadows are gathering, dead breaths are coming, coming for you and for me. Come home, come home.
pardon for you and for me. Come home, come home. You who are weary, come home. Earnestly, tenderly, Jesus is calling, calling all sinners, come home. Announcements. Sometimes I don't feel like they're really announcements. They're informing us of what life is like right here. So, first thing we want to talk about is Pastor Kevin's afternoon with us. Casual conversation, fun conversation, laughter, and just a time of being together. We all miss each other so much, and this is one way we can be together. So join Pastor Kevin this afternoon from 3 to 4 via Zoom. We had a little problem last month, and these little books didn't get here in time. They're here now. If you still need one, please let Janelle and myself know, and we'll see that we get one out to you. Our little food pantry. Our little food pantry was in trouble this week. And Janelle informed several of us that we were not only low in supplies in the pantry, but also in our backup pantry in the office. Elves started showing up all over. But I want to read you what I saw tonight that came from Kristen. She says, when we were picking up our upper room last week, we found the pantry as empty as Andy describes. But a person named Michelle arrived and shooed our additions away. You can put in the newsletter that a person named Michelle comes regularly with four bags of groceries and parks in our lot so she can load our food pantry. She is disabled from an autoimmune disease and can't walk even as far as donating a local food bank requires. She arrived when we were going back into the office to find food to replenish the pantry. Since she made Gordon take back our box, I stayed to talk. She expressed great gratitude for this opportunity to give. Michelle didn't know how long she could continue to give like this, but she was so grateful to be able to do so now. The ripples of our little pantry ministry continue to spread in ways we don't even know. Yes, in ways we don't even know. We now, for a few days, have backup. And our pantry is full. But, please, if you're able, and can supply a little bit, bring it to the church. If the pantry needs some of it, put it in there. If we've got a full pantry when you come, bring it to the office, and we'll put it in there when the need arises. We do have friends, family, and neighbors that are helping this little pantry. Andy said he didn't realize how big it was. Well, it's not big enough, and we do need help keeping it full for those that can't help us supply. Tomorrow is Ladies' Bible Study. We're doing Romans, so 6.30 is video, 7 o'clock is discussion time. I'm looking at the clock. And our, our daughter is in the air, flying home. 
she had to go a long way from Rock Salt Lake City to Dallas and back home. So praying safe travels through the stormy skies as she travels home. And leaves our great grandbaby in order to be home with her husband and her son here. Ties. Everybody is so faithful in continuing to help us support the ministries of the little church on the corner. Please remember us in your budget each day for the ties are supporting. Linda's coming once a month again to kind of keep us spruced up for when we can open the door. Stephanie is keeping the books for us yet. Sadia is willing to come as soon as we can let those little kids come in. And Anastasia is playing music for us every week. And Pastor Lee is holding up this church because it's wobbly. So please, continue with your faithful giving. It is muchly appreciated by the little church on the corner. Pastor Lee. You know, to be honest with you, uh, in our uh, casual conversation time, we sometimes argue with each other, you know, uh, for the differences in our opinions or perspectives, but always, always, we end up apologizing to each other, loving each other, because we are family in God. Amen? For that, we praise the Lord love all of us. Let us dedicate our gift to God. Heavenly Father, thank you for our neighbor, like Michelle, who that herself is not uh, well and strong, but she does her best to get here and bring groceries and other things to be shared with the needy people in our community. Oh, thank you, God. We lift her in your capable hand, Lord. Help her, make her healthy and strong so she can continue to serve you and love our neighbors. Lord, generous God, we ask you to bless the gift we give this morning and the gift we put in the pantry. We ask that you help grow the trust in us, that we might follow without looking back, and that we might live behind more of our old lives to experience more deeply new life in you. Help us live our net on the shore. Live those things that seemed essential before we heard your call, so that we might travel the road you have put before us. In the name of Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. As we go out to meet a changing world, remember this, my brothers and sisters. God alone is our rock and our salvation. The reason Christ is calling each of us to share the good news. And the kingdom of God is coming near and we are on the way. The grace of Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you Oh, forever and ever. Amen. And now, please join us as we sing our closing song, Find Us Together, led by Paul. Mm -hmm. Bind us together, Lord, bind us together with cords that cannot be broken. Bind us together, Lord, bind us.
us together, Lord, bind us together in love. There is only one God. There is only one King. There is only one body. That is why we sing. Bind us together, Lord. Bind us together with cords that cannot be broken. Bind us together, Lord. Bind us together, Lord. Bind us together in love. Amen.